Hi everyone! We're going to talk for a few minutes um, and just sort of summarize the rules that we're learning relating to uh, taking different roots of numbers. Um, we're doing this because you guys have learned a lot of, you know, if this and that, then we do this. If the other thing and the other thing, then we do the other thing. And it gets very confusing in your head, especially the first uh, couple of times that you're going through it. So we're just going to um, take a pause and see see if we can't break it down into some uh, easier to remember way. All right, so for instance, we know that if I have this, if I have this square root of some number x, I know that the answer is going to be positive unless you see a plus minus sign. Okay, the reason that you know it's going to be positive is because uh, you have this principal square root sign, and so that means that you're always going to return the positive answer to the question. Um, so if you see a plus minus sign, then all bets are off, and then we can talk about the minuses as well. But just the uh, square root symbol, we're going to have a positive answer. We also know that if we are taking the square root of a negative number, we also know that there is no real answer for this. And, uh, and I mean real in the mathematical sense. That is, there is an imaginary answer, only imaginary answer exists. Um, and for most of this class, you're not going to be required to calculate the imaginary answer. You're just going to have to tell me that no real answer exists. So we cannot take the square root of a negative number. Okay, now there's more to write here, but let's come over here and talk about our cube roots for a minute and see what kind of information we can have here. So here, if we have the cube root of x, um, then we know that the answer is positive um, because we have a cube root sign here and we have a positive number in between, uh, underneath the radical sign, because number under radical is positive. If, however, we are taking, let me just, if, however, we are taking the cube root of a negative number, then we know that the answer is real, that is not imaginary. and will be negative. So you can get an answer, and the answer will be negative because you're gonna multiply three negative numbers together to get that negative number underneath the radical sign. All right, so those are two things that we know already. Now, let's say that I was told that we are going to take the square root of x squared. What is that going to do for us? Well, the answer to this is going to be the absolute value of x. And I'm going to say here that we need absolute value signs because we want the principal square root. And the principal square root is the positive square root. So since we want a positive answer, we're going to force it to be positive right here, right? Um, and if I had a square root sign, can you see that? Here, I'll move it up a little bit. There we go. If we had a square root sign, 
of a negative x squared, right, then that is going to be the absolute value of negative x, which is still going to be x, right? So we still need the absolute value sign. Right? So we would have little twos here that get crossed off. We have negative x, but we put it in the absolute value sign. We have little twos here that get crossed off as well. And we have the absolute value sign there. Okay? All right. Now let's come over here to this side. If we are taking the third root of x to the third, we are going to cross these off and we are just going to get an x. No absolute value sign is needed. Right? No absolute value sign is needed. And if you take the third root of negative x to the third, you are just going to get negative x. No absolute value sign is needed. Okay, now the only last thing for you to remember is that these rules over here apply to square roots or any even root. So you follow these same rules if you're taking the 4th root, the 6th root, the 8th root, the 22nd root. As long as it's an even number, you get to follow these rules. Cube roots, these are the rules for any odd root. So 3rd root, 5th root, ninth root, 111th root, right? Anytime you're taking an odd root, you would follow these rules. All right, I hope this helps kind of simplify this in your head a little bit. Um, I am not a fan of saying that you need to memorize this. This is not worth memorizing. What you should do with this is you should write it in your notes and you should refer to it whenever you're trying to do these types of problems.